To say that this was the wildest worlds I've seen would be an understatement. So many upsets, so many wild finishes that anyone who could have predicted this 100% correctly would have clairvoyance that rivals the foresight of biblical prophets. 619 teams entered Houston with the dreams of becoming a world champion, but only four made that dream a reality. But there are still eight winners from the divisions who made it to Einstein's, so let's see who they are. A three seed versus a six seed that just does not tell the whole story. The Archimedes field gave us more chaos than we could have imagined. A playoff field with a combined 20 Einstein finals appearances and 12 championship wins whittles down to eight teams who combined for just four division wins. And three of them are from the Killer Bees. The one seed of OP Robotics, Cheesy Poofs, and Rush, which on paper is planet-destroying levels of powerful, shockingly fell to the eight seed of CSPA Gems, Makin' Magic, and Upper Creek Robotics after OP had connection issues and Rush had intake issues. They then fell to the 4 seed of Wild Stang, CPR, and Roboduck in the lower bracket after OP's intake got damaged, turning the number one scorer of 2023 into a defense bot. And so after a few more top seeds and world champions fell, that leaves us here with the Bees, Fighting Robo Vikings, and Beak Squad against Mechanical Advantage, Ironclaw, and the Nerd Herd, who subbed in for the Alliance Captain Mojo. The three seed won the first match after Mojo had arm issues, and Ironclaw's balance attempt turned into a send. Mechanical Advantage and Ironclaw had three piece autos, and Nerd Herd's balance extended the early blue lead to 21. Blue went to work at the grid, putting quick cycle times together as Red played catch up. Red still put links together as both sides maxed out the grid into endgame. Both sides wobbled and bobbled and got the triple balance. A close one, but Blue did just enough to force a tiebreaker. Mojo subbed themselves back in as the other Blue bots got three pieces again in auto though Mojo couldn't get on the balance. 33's cone went too low, while Beak Squad put up three pieces as well. Robo Vikings had trouble with the balance too, and Blue had another 20 point lead. Both sides raced for pieces, with Mojo's fixed arm helping put links together. Blue had fast cycle times, while throwing in some defense to slow Red down. Blue went for the triple climb while Red scrambled to place some final pieces. Both sides got all bots up, but the sixth seed came out with the 29 point victory to advance. The two seed of Buck's Wrath, the Robo Wranglers, and Steel Armadillos went up against the one seed of Bread, Argos, and MSET Fish in the Curry Finals. The two seed beat the one seed in match 11 and the first finals match and wanted the sweep. Bread and Argos had a nice three piece in auto, while the Armadillos had a balance that didn't go haywire. 6329's three piece turned into a two piece after they missed their second cone, and Blue came out with the early advantage. 6329 zipped around for pieces while the blue bots filled their grid. Both sides went link for link as they tried to slow the other down. Blue clung desperately to their 5 point lead in hopes of forcing a third match, but this one was anyone's to take. Robo Wranglers almost lost it after this huge chin check from Argos, but they stayed moving to get another cone. More hard hits came into endgame as both alliances started supercharging their grids. Robo Wranglers dropped off one last cone before joining their partners for the triple balance at the buzzer. Blue wobbled and bobbled and couldn't get set in time for Bread's handstand. And if only, if only, 
as the two seed got the 26 point win. The five seed of Strike Zone, Neutrons, and Team Rice faced the one seed of Barker Redbacks and the Alpha Dogs, with the Alliance Captain Wild Stallions putting in backup Flying Toasters. Ah, uh, yep, that's the name. The one seed got the win in match seven, but the five seed got the win in the first finals match after the Wild Stallions claw broke off following this hit from Neutrons. The Redbacks had a link forming auto while the Neutrons cube shots put three pieces on as well. Strike Zone's high cone went low, and Red had a narrow lead into Teleop. The lead evaporated as Blue put links together as Red needed to play catch up. The Alpha Dogs had what looked like connection issues, which left Red with just two bots as Blue supercharged their grid. The Alpha Dogs got back in it and raced over for the triple climb, while Blue did the same. The five seed got it done at the grid and came away with the upset for the win. The one seed of Citrus Circuits, Code Orange, and Backup Ramtech took on the two seed of Symbotics, Robo Chargers, and Robo Bees. The two seed got the win in match 11, but the one seed got the win in finals match 1, and wanted to end it here. Code Orange had an auto that formed a high link, while Robo Chargers and Robo Bees had three pieces for red. 1678 had issues with their auto not getting on the charge station, and Red came away with the lead. Red extended their lead with quick cycle times, and Blue couldn't keep pace. Code Orange almost lost it on multiple occasions, which cost precious seconds, but they kept their wheels on the ground. Robo Bees laid a hit on Ram Tech, which caused them to mishandle a cube, hurting those cycle times. Symbotics nudged a low cube to finish maxing out the grid as they went to supercharge it. Red got the triple balance, and Blue looked like they weren't gonna get it. But Citrus Circuits got their headstand at the buzzer. A close match, but the 2C did enough to force a tiebreaker. Westside Boiler Invasion subbed back in for Blue and had a balance and auto while Code Orange had a three cone auto, and Citrus took a hard hit to the barrier, but still got all three pieces counted. Robo Chargers had their mid cube go low, and the Robo Bees ran into the charge station en route for their third piece, giving Blue the narrow lead. Blue put those cycles together and played defense on Red to slow them down. Red got the lead with the fifth link, but Blue's links kept things going back and forth. Six links apiece into Endgame as Citrus had no issues with the headstand for the triple, and Red had issues getting all three robots up. Symbotics readjusted, but the Robo Bees couldn't get set, and if only, if only, as the one seed takes the tiebreaker to advance. The one seed of Madtown Robotics, High Tide, and Control Z took on the three seed of Rex, the Cobra Commanders, and Gear It Forward. Madtown and High Tide both had three piece autos for red, while 1727 put up two cones for blue, and 2338 had some troubles with their auto. Red got the early lead and had quick cycles to extend it. Gear it forward played defense to slow Red down, but had some issues with their control, effectively leaving Blue with a 2 on 3. The 1 seed did not slow up on the grid as they supercharged it heading into endgame. Red got the triple balance, while Gear it forward parked for Blue, and the other two bots had trouble getting set. They wobbled and bobbled and got balanced as time expired. A tough way for the season to end for the three seed as the one seed advances with the huge win. The three seed of the Fighting Pie, the Howdy Bots, and Mech Tech took on the one seed of Enigma Robotics, 
Graybots, and Nerdspark for the Johnson Division. The three seed got the win in match one after one supercharged cube gave them four extra points, so they wanted the sweep for the upset. Enigma had a three-piece auto, with two of the blue bots getting two pieces. This game was anyone's to take as both alliances battled link for link, with hard hits getting played and solid defense slowing each other up. Red maxed out the grid as Enigma popped a wheelie to join their partners for the triple balance. Blue got theirs maxed out as they wobbled and bobbled for the triple as time ran out. Sometimes 15 points of penalty helps force a tiebreaker. Match 3 had 422's high cube go low and 2075's 3 piece giving Red the early lead. Red put links together as Greybots kept sending it over the charge station. Hard hits kept coming as Blue tried to claw their way back in it. 1718 had issues with their intake so switched to defense as the other bots put pieces up. Howdy bots also had issues with their intake, so also went to defend Red. They mishandled the traffic jam and wound up on their back as the horn blared for endgame. Five seconds later, 1718 stalled out, leaving Blue with the one on three. Red supercharged the grid and got the triple balance as Mech Tech put a few last pieces before wobbling and bobbling and not getting the balance. Not the way the 6 seed wanted things to go, as the 1 seed advanced by 81 points. The 2 seed versus the 1 seed for the Milstein division, with the 1 seed getting the 6 point win in the first match and looking to advance. Krypton Cougars and Aces High put up 3 piece autos for red, which gave their side the commanding lead. Fusion Core and Tractor Technicians pieced together links to get Blue back in it. The hard hits kept coming, and maybe a bit too hard, as Cougars caught a piece of Fusion Core, leaving them on their side. The camera didn't even have time to pan out before IHOT stalled out, leaving Red with the one on three. Aces High still put links together as Blue supercharged the grid and got the triple balance. We need a third match. Both sides had two three-piece autos, with Berkelium's arcing shot finding the floor, as with Fusion's second cone. Tractor Technician's balance didn't, so Red had the early lead. Both sides raced to fill the grid, but IHOT's collision with Fusion Core broke their intake, putting them on defense. Blue gained the lead with all three of their bots on offense, though Cougars and Aces High stayed in it. Still anyone's match into endgame, as Blue got an 8th link before the triple balance. Cougars missed the link with their final cone as they joined their partners at the charge station. They only had time to wobble before time expired, and if only, if only, as the two seed completed the comeback with a 36 point win. The one seed of Mars Wars, Holy Cows, and Bionzik came from the lower bracket in the Newton field to face off the three seed of Torch, Auto, and Blaze Robotics. The three seed came away with the win in match one and wanted to end it here. Red had two three piece autos with each of the third pieces finding the floor, but they still got the lead after Holy Cow's third piece found the best way to not count. Red got cycles going and played some defense to slow Blue down. Red's hits were effective in causing Blue to fumble pieces, but Otto stalled out leaving Red with the two on three. The one seed made light work of the mismatch and got the triple balance with plenty of time to spare. The remaining Red bots put a few last pieces on the grid before getting the double. 
A pretty close finish despite it all, but say it with me now, we need a third match. This time, Otto's three-piece worked to perfection, which was a pretty crafty strategy. Roll a couple cubes over to the grid, and push them in the lower spots as they drop a third one up high. The Holy Cow's third piece fell off again, and Team Rewind's cone didn't find the mark either, giving Red the early edge. Mars Wars almost ate it from the collision with the charge station, but stayed in it to drop off a piece. Red cycle times were too fast for Blue as they got links quickly. Rewind had issues with their intake, so they switched to defense with the hopes of slowing Red down. The three seed kept going after the grid as this one got out of hand going into endgame. Still close at the grid, but 20 points of penalty also helped to give the three seed the win. So many high scoring matches and close finishes that left us with the Hopper Alliance against the Daily Alliance. The Daily Alliance came from the lower bracket and made it to the finals by way of beating the Galileo Alliance by just three points, then beating the Johnson Division by no points having the tie broken based on penalties, before getting revenge on the Curie division. The Hopper Alliance went undefeated in the Einstein eliminations, beating the Galileo, Newton, and Curie alliances, before beating the Daily Alliance in match one, after the Neutrons had connection issues. After one patent pending lengthy Dean speech, we're here at finals two. Madtown put up three pieces in auto, while High Tide missed their second cone. The Neutrons missed their second cone as well, while Strike Zone's high piece fell low, giving Red the two-point lead. All cylinders firing with both sides racing around and scoring, not concerned with defense in the slightest, though that didn't stop huge hits coming from High Tide and Madtown. This particular collision between Neutrons and High Tide broke a piece off of Neutron's bot, but they kept scoring as this game could have gone either way. Blue wanted the tiebreaker, Red wanted the championship. Control Z put a nice block on Team Rice as these sides found ways to play defense in the midst of a high scoring weekend. Still anyone's to take going into endgame as each alliance maxed out the grid as High Tide dropped off one last supercharged cone before balancing. And if that ain't the cone heard round the world, I don't know what is. Strike Zone completed the ninth link with a low cube as each side got the triple balance as time expired. The dust settled and everyone waited with anticipation. Only one point decided it, but the Hopper Alliance came out on top. Let's meet our champions. Winners of the Central Valley and Monterey Bay Regionals, Madtown built one of the best bots of the year to claim their second championship in five years. 52 and 1 on the season in a run for the ages. This speedy and hefty robot gave nightmares for defenders and turned Mad Town into Title Town. Winners of the Wainimi Port Regional, Ventura County Regional, and Aerospace Valley Regional, High Tide had their eyes set on this moment right here. Einstein finalists last year, they would not be denied this time around. Not too many teams make it to the finals in back-to-back -back years. And for High Tide, the second time's the charm. Not bad for a team that only started competing in 2019. Midwest Regional winners, Control Z made it up the mountaintop in just their third world's appearance. An absolutely clutch performance in the end with their defense, 
helping their side escape with the one point win. We'll have to wait and see if Control Z hits Control C and Control V on this season. I will say that this isn't the Ontario team anyone expected to win this year. Finalists at the McMaster University District, with just two previous event wins to their name, Beaverworks served as the third pick for this alliance. Though they were a backup bot, this was no carry. Their defense played a huge role in Einstein Match 11, slowing 148 and company down to get a win to advance to the finals. Congrats to these 2023 champions. And congrats to all the other teams for surviving another season. Until next time, I hope you have fun, stay safe, Stay subscribed to this channel so you don't miss out on any more amazing uploads. And for the last time in 2023, remember, gracious in victory, professional in defeat. Amen. Red won the first one. If they win again, we have some champions. If not, we go to a tiebreaker. Let's find out right now. Post that score. Red Alliance winning! We have a new champion here on Einstein! Red Alliance led by Mad Town Robotics 1323 from Madera, California. Hopper, our winner. Back to you, Blair. Simon says hands down. Hands up, hands up. Oh, oh, tiny boy. Time. Wait a minute, tiny boy, tiny boy. Come here, come here. Wait a minute. I've been watching all these amazing robotics rounds, and it's not an individual, it's a real team sport. And so I'm gonna ask us all as a team, should I let tiny boy stay in the game? Yeah. yeah. from January till now, but that is the end of Charged Up, presented by Haas, but we'll be back next year, and you'll be there. Congratulations, everybody, thanks for a great week. Keep first, first.